Over the last fortnight, Extinction Rebellion protesters have been causing disruption across the capital. Their activities have resulted in almost 2,000 arrests and posed an expensive challenge for the Met to police. So what have the protests achieved? And have the campaigners won over many Londoners to their cause? Gareth Furby went to find out. It was a two-week-long demonstration that spread across central London. Those involved convinced this was a noble cause. We need to take action to bring the government's attention to address the climate change problem. But some Londoners facing disruption took a different view. I think you're hysterical, extremists, and uh, you're alienating public opinion. For the Met Police, it was a real test of their tactics and of their resources. This is the story of the rebellion that Londoners couldn't ignore. We're going back a few weeks to the build-up to this event. This is James Brown, who runs a charity providing toilet facilities for disabled people. It can lift somebody in a sling. He's also visually impaired. Almost complete blindness. And has made a decision that will change his life. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do everything I possibly could. It's something he feels so passionately about, it brings him to tears. So the, the, the process of grieving for our planet is a complex and lengthy one. This action is the most important thing I have ever done in my life. And James would be just one of thousands. This is how it started, with a news conference in Soho and a declaration. We are going to blockade and shut down every single road going into the central area of Westminster. And we're going to very loudly, very clearly, and very respectfully say that if a government is taking its people towards extinction, it is not a government anymore that we respect. <laughs> Day one, the so-called opening ceremony at Marble Arch. called this lighting a beacon of truth and then watched the sunset. The next day it began. The tactics were to set up camps and block roads with people chaining themselves onto vehicles. We're trying to shut down central London to draw attention to the climate and ecological I guess it feels like we've got to a point where we have no choice. Go, 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 go. police behind you. Go, go, go. Put it down now. Put it down now. At first, the police tried to stop a camp going up. I'm seizing this under section 19 of pace. But by nightfall, the protesters had settled in. We need to take action to bring the government's attention to address the climate change problem. Across town overnight, there's a new target from a group calling themselves Animal Rebellion. It's Smithfield Meat Market with a mock funeral procession for the dead animals inside. It sort of reminds me a bit of a church procession. That's kind of the aim, yeah. Part of the market is closed down as the protesters camp out. All of this a challenge for the traders. Freedom of speech, isn't it? Freedom of speech. Everybody's got their own opinion, isn't they? Every time I see or think about a piece of meat now, I see animal carcasses, I see death, I see torture. We need to bring an end to this cruelty, man. Over the next few days, the action spreads. And roads around central London start to clog up. You can see the traffic jams. It's just caused the whole West End to block up. St Pancras has taken over 45 minutes. So the plan is initially to go in and engage with them and explain the conditions. For the Met Police, the scale and spread of these events over so many days 
presents a real challenge. You're camping in a park in the middle of London. You're not, it's, not, it's not a camping site, so you might get moved. Yeah, well, you I'm, need to appreciate that. Yeah. Here, Superintendent Louise Puddyfoot is overseeing the policing on the streets. It's a shame you're in the road, isn't it? How are you today? Yeah, I'm all right, I'm a bit tired. I think some people wonder, what's taking you so long? Why is it taking you so long to clear the roads and get rid of the obstructions? And the reason is because it is really complex. And we've also got a responsibility for the, you know, the health and safety of the protesters. So we can't just you know, go in and injure people, trying to move them. We've got to be really, really careful about how we do it. And we've also got to look after the police officers that are going in to do it as well. This was City Airport. And despite high security, protesters made their point and some were inside as well. I booked on a flight to Amsterdam. James Brown, the visually impaired protester who we met earlier, is filming on his phone in the airport. Um, there's a lot of rebels outside the airport. There are a few inside. I think I'm the only one outside at the moment. And he's about to do something that makes headlines around the world. There's my plane to Amsterdam. Another protester filmed him as he climbed onto the roof of a passenger plane. For the Met Police, this was not acceptable behaviour. To go to the airport, to get on top of an aeroplane is incredibly dangerous for the person who's now been arrested and indeed for other people. Uh, to protest in any way inside the perimeter of an airport is a very dangerous thing to do. After this event, there was a gradual hardening in the police approach. And on day nine, the Met Police got tough. Clearing Trafalgar Square overnight and imposing a ban on all Extinction Rebellion actions in central London. The next day, protesters were blocked from crossing Lambeth Bridge. Everywhere I've walked today, the police have come up to me saying, where am I going, what am I doing? I'm, I'm making it very clear that we, that we know that if we stand anywhere and protest, we will be locked up. But the crowds came back, trying again to block streets, saying they would not be silenced and wearing gags to make the point. The police response, though, was now uncompromising. I came because I suddenly realised that public protest had been banned. And these arrests changed little. Guilty of caring about our planet. The roads would stay open. What you're doing here is insanity. And then, on day 12, the capital's transport system was targeted. And for some commuters, this was simply going too far. Parliament, there's so many other ways, you know. Look at that train over there. People are stuck on there. You can't get off. At Canning Town, it was meant to be a peaceful protest. It didn't work out that way. First it was more pleading, like, come on, like, we're trying to get to work, let's go. Then the abuse started um, with swearing and whatnot. There was a group of about, I don't know, five to ten people that sort of stuck a boot in, I'm guessing because he had kicked them. The disruption to the journey of, like, working class people isn't going to get them on your side if you're trying to convince them that there is this climate emergency who need to have them on your side. Over two weeks, there were almost 2,000 people arrested, including James Brown. Do I have regrets? No, I don't. I would rather be able to look my children in the eye in a few years' time and say, you know, at least, at least I tried to do something and I, I couldn't stand by and do nothing. The banners no longer fly. The camps have gone. But London may not have seen the last of this. <laughs>